Welcome back to the iFootball Indy Car Podcast, and we can finally officially say off seasoning is over. It's good. What isn't over is to wait for Dale Coyne to announce their racing drive for 2024. So we're now two weeks out from St. Petersburg. We have no idea. So, as we said last week, today's predictions episode, Dale Coyne haven't really been included because we can't include drivers we don't know. We've got more of an idea, but that's probably a next week thing. Um, but we're still waiting for that. Um, we're still waiting for St. Petersburg, though, but it's 14 days from today. We can actually remember it in our heads now instead of having to look at Archie's whiteboard. Uh, 12 days until on track action. It's, it's getting close, isn't it? Yeah, and by the time the podcast comes out, it will be 10 days until on track action. We're recording this on, on Sunday evening. So, yeah, we're getting close. There's a there's a test coming up at Sebring. So, Dale Coyne are running Jack Harvey and sports car veteran Colin Braun. So, maybe more of an idea who are maybe two of goodness that knows how many drivers <laughs> um yeah so so that i think is monday tuesday uh, yep. so by the time the podcast comes out it will be the second day of that test uh try and find out as much about that as as we can uh but yeah it's predictions time predictions probably the best five. episode the best episode of the year Most i think it's our, first, it's our first ever official predictions and you know we did bits and bobs of predictions last year and they were so incredibly bad we decided to embarrass ourselves more this year so we're going for it, which is interesting. So we'll see how these fare. Um, but they're always good fun to look back on. The good, the bad, the Jack Harveys of last year. Um, so please don't remind me. Please don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I predicted Polo champions. So I'm still taking that. So let, let's begin, Charlie. Let's not mess around for this one. Um, our 2024 NTT IndyCar Series champion. Do you want me to take it away? Yeah, you take you start us off for this one. Well, I mean, if if people have listened to the Tom Gaymore episode, then we kind of gave our early predictions then. So I, I kind of feel like I've just got to stick with my guts. And it's the same pick as last year. I'm going for Scott McLaughlin. It was a little ambitious last year, I would say. It was only his third year in the series. I think maybe people kind of had too high expectations for getting after what was a really strong sophomore year that, you know, he still had some things to learn. It was only his third year in open wheel cars. But I just feel like last season was so strong that I, I think he's I think he's a good bet. I, I mean, obviously he's got to overcome the Ganassis. Pelot, Dixon were were pretty imperious last year. But I, I, I do feel like McLaughlin ironed out the, the kind of inconsistencies that he had that were still there in twenty twenty two, especially latterly in twenty twenty three. Um yeah, fourth year, I, I kind of feel like he's ready to challenge. I mean, he was the best Penske last season, full stop. He was certainly the best Penske in, in qualifying trim. I think he was top two in qualifying in I think, seven of his last eight qualifying runs. He picked Newgard into the NTT P1 award at Gateway. Um, so the oval win's getting close. And I mean, it's the right time to, to kind of peak on ovals given... There are eight on the calendar this year, eight eight races across six different ovals. Gonna have to keep getting used to that. Yeah, I think it is six different ovals. You can see Dan I've, doing the maths. Iowa, uh, Iowa, Milwaukee, Nashville, Gateway, Indy. Is it five? It's five. Unless I've then. missed one. Maybe no, five, no, but... no. I think you could be right. <laughs> Gateway, Iowa, Milwaukee, Nashville, Indy. Yeah, there's two double headers. So uh, we, we end it. <laughs> uh, is it seven races? Yes, because six of the last eight races are on ovals. I was thinking of the eight and thinking there were eight oval races. <laughs> uh, yeah, so seven seven oval races, and I feel like McLaughlin's kind of getting close. I know Newgarden, considering all of the oval races, is kind of the people who may see him as the best pick for the championship. polo has been good on ovals, but still has to crack short ovals where Newgarden is kind of a master, but I do feel like McLaughlin's getting closer to New Garden, and if he can crack that first oval win, I mean, he was he was the best Penske on road and street courses last year, and finishing third in the championship, he was the best Chevrolet as well as being the best Penske. And yeah, you know, all all championship all champions have come from I think Penske and Ganassi since 2013, and I expect that to continue. But McLaughlin may be a, a bold pick against, you know, Dixon, Polo, and even season names like like Power and Newgarden. But I can see this I can see him having a really, really spectacular year and continuing to build on what's been built in his first three years. 
I was hoping we forgot about Tom Game or Riverside because I wanted to change my answer because Tom <laughs> nicked my one. Um, but now it's been a couple of months and we've had a proper time to think about it and analyse it. Um, it's it's a lot different. I've gone for Paso Award. Um, I know I'm the president of the Award fan club, but when I look at it from a different perspective, from an outsider's perspective, I think there's a lot to take on board. We know his approach changed last year in regards to the fact that he sort of took that laid back approach. He wasn't as willing to take the risk. And if he continues that, who's to say that's not going to make a difference? Because he lost a lot of points through that last year. Detroit, um, Indy, Long Beach, even mid Ohio, there are occasions where he lost points by doing that. And, you know, if he doesn't make these 50 50 decisions all the time, that might help him. Then you bring to the fact the ovals, as you said, there are more over races. You've got the six of the last state awards. You know, he's not quite new garden level, but he's one of the strongest at short ovals. Um, so that's going to play into his hands. I think this new engineering truck that's been spoken about quite a lot will also make a difference. It's seen as a sort of state of the art facility, which is really going to help their development at Aaron McLaren. I think now they've had that year to settle down to three cars, they can sort of push for the championship. And I think a mix of this Aaron McLaren technology coming in, as well as awards, refined approach, as well as the nature of the calendar, short ovals aren't going to help Polo and Dixon as much, for example. Yes, it might be a bit out there. Yes, it might be my tinted, rose tinted glasses, but I think when you consider some of the factors, I would definitely want to consider. So here's my pick. Just to make clear, me and Archie both going to these a bit more on the Dyphon website um, in a few well, next week's time. So have a look for that one. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my champion pick. So I feel like mine's more basic in the fact of <laughs> Alex Pillow. I think I think I mentioned it, if we're talking about the Tom Game mapping, I think I kind of mentioned it in there, just in the fact of, Kind of the dominance that he had this year it was it was a lot it was he was ahead all the time he won it early like it wasn't down to the last race um and i think if he can kind of take that momentum in i think momentum is a big thing in kind of sports it's not just the one if you do well one year and then if you can carry that on i feel like you do really well um so yeah i feel like if you can carry it on then he could win it this time and i think as long as he doesn't kind of do well in the first half and then do better in the second half, then I think he stands a pretty good chance. Yeah, I mean, we will go more into each individual driver next week when we do our, our season preview. But I think the one interesting thing with Polo will be whether the are off-track distractions again. I think that was a limiting factor in, in 2022 off the back of his first championship. And then things kind of calmed down in 2023 all of a sudden he goes back to this imperious form. So it depends whether things are calm and kind of settled off track because there's still legal stuff going on in the background with relation to the contract debacle with, with McLaren having, you know, he, he decided to stay at Ganassi, obviously, despite all of the money invested in, in him by McLaren. So, yeah, I, I think that's the only thing I could that could stop Polo. I mean, obviously I picked McLaughlin. I kind of wanted to go a little bit against the grain, but... Yeah, I think Polo is a reasonable pick. Yeah, but as we said, you've got the short oval factor. Yes, Polo is getting better at them, but six six overs in the last eight races, five of them being traditionally short ovals, it's going to make a, make a big difference. And, you know, it's always hard to say. We wouldn't have predicted power in 2022, for example, so you can't really predict anything substantial. But I think the other thing with Polo is, as on your point, when we had that, when he had the McLaren stuff ignite last year, he went off the boil a tiny bit. Yes, it wasn't for much, and yes, he was still absolutely mighty, but that boil went off a tiny bit there. So three different picks, that's a nice, good start. Um, however, for the next one, I think we're going to go pretty similar for this one. So I'm going to kick off Rookie of the Year. Um, we have got Linus Linkvist, Tom Blomqvist, and Kiffin Simpson, and then we've got Christian Rasmussen, but he's obviously only doing the road courses, so I see wins every race. He's probably not going to be in contention for that one. So... Venus Lukvist is my pick. I think one, he's got the experience already. He's got those free races um, over Simpson, for example. He's got the truck record. He was very impressive in those free races. He's an Indy next champion. He sort of knows what he's doing. He's massively hyped up and he's in the top dogs at Chip Ganassi. Yes, Simpson is as well, but he one doesn't have the same experience or the track record that Lukvist does. Then you've got Tom Blunkvist, finally, finally talented driver. I think he's an absolutely superb driver and really glad he's making the switch but he doesn't have the oval experience he's at the Meyer shank and he sort of hasn't got that single seater experience so i think lundqvist is the sensible choice here 
Yeah, I think he's by far the strongest rookie candidate. I, I've picked him as well. Um, I, I think it just speaks volume that after only three races with Maya Shank, he caught the eye of the series leading team and has got this move to Ganassi, who have really been the, the unstoppable force in, in recent years, obviously. Yes, Penske won a, won a championship in 2022, but last year no one was, was really close to them, close to Polo or Dixon across the... Uh, the kind of course of the season, really. And I think you, you said, Dan, a sneak preview to the predictions piece that um, Lundqvist probably should have been rookie of the year last year, but he should not have he should not have had to spend that year on the sidelines, really. But yeah, brilliant in Indy, Indy Lights. He, I think he took... Did he? I think he won on debut, actually. Um, won, won, three win, uh, won three races and was behind only Kyle Kirkwood and David Malukas in his rookie year and then stormed to the championship in 2022. So I think that, that shows all you need to know. He qualified 11th, 12th, 12th, I think, in his three races with Maya Shank across all three different track types. So it's going to help him as well that he's already kind of got his eye in. You know, he's had an oval race on, on a short oval. He's had a road course race. He's had a street course race and has performed well in well in each of them, really. So... He comes in with that learning and is with one of the strongest teams. Yes, obviously, looking at the competition, Simpson hasn't had as much of that pedigree on the road to Indy. He's only 19 years old as well. Blankvist doesn't have the same equipment, really, with Maya Shank. Obviously, Rasmussen's not running the full season, so it would take a miracle for him to to win Rookie of the Year. So, yeah, factoring in just how talented Blankvist clearly is, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer in my eyes. Yeah, I kind of, um, I chose him as well, just for the fact of also he's got the experience of being in the races like last year. And I think even if it was just one race, I feel like that kind of knowledge mm. and like experience you can take in and you can do really well. Um, I know that they're all going to like go through testing, but it's just that little bit that I think will make him more familiar with it. And even though the cars are going to be different and it's going to be a different team, I think it's still the same principle of just being in the car, which will really help him. So. I don't have anything to say that you guys haven't. Cool. Fairly unanimous on that one. That was sort of expected. Um, then we sort of get to the more subjective ones uh, rather than um, factual information. So we've gone for the surprise. Archie, let's kick off with you one for surprise of the year. I'm going for David Malukas, which is... I mean, it's, it's quite a difficult one, surprise of the year, but I think there's the expectation on Malukas is kind of varying within what you hear people say he obviously wasn't mclaren's first choice Pelot was was obviously mclaren bound until the contract debacle ensued after the the decision to stay with, with ganassi um it's, it's always kind of hard to gain the read of of drivers who are at these smaller teams obviously malukas moving from coin so in some ways he's, he's kind of an unknown quantity and it's kind of unknown how he will perform and slot into a top team I mean, he's certainly shown promise in his first two years of um, in IndyCar after graduating from Indy Lights. He finished, he finished second in 2021. In the end, actually, he was only 13 points behind Kyle Kirkwood, who swept the entire road to Indy, won all the championships in his first year, and is kind of regarded as this really generational talent. So for Malukas to be that close to him in Lights, you know, kind of speaks to the talent Malukas Malukas could possess. I think he he was impressively only off the, off the podium four times in 20 races in that uh, Indy Lights campaign. So that was an interesting nugget looking kind of deeper at his junior career statistics. But yeah, he's now got obviously got two years of IndyCar experience under his belt, shown to be really strong on the short ovals. He's, he's got back-to-back -back podiums at Worldwide Technology Raceway, Gateway. And yeah, 16th, 17th in the championship, respectful enough with dale coin racing being you know one of the teams with, with slightly less resources obviously i just feel like malukas could be a surprise quantity just because he's not really been spoken about that much i kind of feel like he's just been lost in the whole just chaos of the off season really the whole the whole silly season all of the different sagas that get thrown up obviously it's going to be a challenge up against award rossi both very established drivers in the series but I think some people may be suggesting, is he up to the standard, you know, to drive for McLaren, immediately thinking he's under under pressure to perform in his first year. But I kind of feel like he could relish that pressure and really, really turn some heads this year. 
I most of these I see a name like yes, they're the one that stands out. But for this one, I really struggled. There was no one this year that I thought, well, yes, they're going to be my surprise. So it took me a while, but I think I'm I've gone for Pietro for the Pauli. I think where he was a left field announcement, where he hasn't really had much of the car experience, people don't really know what to expect of him. He's in an RLL team where they perform brilliantly in some cases, not so well in other cases. And in a car where Jack Harvey really struggled, I think the expectation for Vittipaldi is pretty low. One, because he hasn't had this racing experience. And two, where, where as I said, Harvey struggled. But I think, he, I think he could turn some heads. I think he's got a lot of experience in different categories. He's got a, a big support and he'll have a good team around him and I, f I don't think it's easy to say why i think he's going to be a surprise but i think the expectation of fittipaldi is lower than quite possibly deserved i think lungard's now seen as top dog but i can't see fittipaldi being miles away from him you know lungard didn't take very long to get up to speed who's to say that's going to be the case of fittipaldi so i think whereas the expectations for him are qu quite unknown i think he could be one who maybe raises a few eyebrows yeah, I think you've got to kind of look at expectation to determine who's going to be a surprise because obviously you're not going to be surprised by someone who's established in the series. And that's just why I feel like Malukas, that he's just, yeah, he doesn't feel like someone that many people have spoken about. Obviously, he's going to miss the first race of the season and maybe because of that, he is now more in people's eye lines. And when he does come to make his debut for McLaren, maybe people will talk about him some more. But I just feel like he's enough of an unknown quantity in terms of what he could deliver at a sort of higher level team that, yeah, I mean, at the time, he was a bit of an outside option for McLaren in many ways. Um, so, yeah, I agree with Fittipaldi as well. I think he could be one that also kind of turns heads. So, yeah, I obviously thought about this a very long time, but um, I kind of, I went with, like you said, with the expectations of people. I kind of went with... Um, I'm strong, Max Armstrong, just for the fact of he did really well last year. I don't know if it's going to be a good surprise or a bad surprise, but in the fact of he did really well last year and it was only on road and street, and now he's going to be doing ovals as well. And I feel like if he does really well, I feel like some people will see it as a surprise, but people who kind of like followed won't. But I feel like in the case of because there's like high expectations of him, I, then if he like kind of comes in and doesn't do as well, I feel like it would be like like the bad, a bad surprise but i couldn't really like think of anyone because like i said it's like it's everyone is except from like the record everyone's like more defined it's kind of hard to pick someone when you know that everyone is kind of a good driver like you know that what they can do and some people it's not really a surprise because you know that they can do it so that's who i went with <laughs> I think Armstrong is actually someone that's been pretty slept on. So I mean, it's not much has been said about him. So yeah, I think he's one that could also um, surprise a little bit. I kind of feel like Armstrong's in that similar bracket to Malukas, to be fair, where he's at one of the the top teams, one of the one of the big four. But again, he's someone that kind of gets overshadowed a bit by by his teammates, obviously. So yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad shout, to be fair. Let's go to our transferred driver. So this is people who are staying in the series but moving teams. So we've got Stingray Rob obviously moving to AJ Foy, Marcus Ericsson to Andretti, David Malukas to Aaron McLaren, uh, Felix Rosenquist to Maya Shank Racing as well. We could, sorry, Rowan Grosjean. I must not forget to think of Hollinger Racing, potentially Jack Harvey, but obviously that's unconfirmed. Um, Ellie, you start us off for this one. Okay. I went with... I have two options because I couldn't choose. It was either David Malukas because he kind of he's going up to a bigger team, like I said, it's kind of some sort of expectation on him, and I'd I'd hope that he does really well. Or um Marcus Ericsson, because he was very consistent last year. He he was just consistently up there. He was like maybe he had a couple of bad kind of races, but other than that, he was always kind of there and up at the top. So I kind of just Chelsea him just for the fact that he was very consistent last year. It wasn't like consistent in the middle. It was more consistent at the top. It was more fighting, and he he had chances to win and stuff like that. It wasn't it wasn't just at the back. Yeah, I'll follow on from that because I know you've gone different, Dan. So I've also gone for Marcus Eriksson. I think, as you mentioned, the consistency is kind of just what Andretti need. I think it's a good move for both parties. Good move for him. He get he gets paid, which is no more than he deserves he, he really deserves that after a really strong few years at ganassi i mean 
it's kind of a, a mark of his consistency that he's actually finished sixth in the championship in the last in the last three seasons, I believe. And more impressively, he's finished, I think, in the last three years, he only finished outside the top 12 on six occasions, which is really impressive. And, you know, they had Grosjean Andretti, obviously. He was very streaky, pretty much the model of inconsistency. Ericsson is, is a very measured driver. He, he's the opposite. He's always there to pick up the pieces and that, that's where a lot of his wins have come from obviously though he's also got the 500 on his resume from 2022 and that's going to be attractive for a team that haven't won the Indy 500 since 2014 uh, since 2017 sorry with uh, Takuma Sato um, so yeah I, I actually feel like Andretti are in a very strong position having downsized and I just feel like Ericsson will be will be a very big part of that I mean their strongest driver or their highest placed driver was, was Colton Herzl last year in 10th and you know, when you when you see Ericsson's finished sixth in the last three years, obviously Ganassi have, have kind of been they've been the model basically, and Andretti have been lagging a bit behind, especially since the introduction of the aero screen. But I just feel like Ericsson is he's just what Andretti need. And I feel like he adds a bit of experience to a team with a lot of young talent. And I mean Hertz is pretty experienced now, but Herter and Kirkwood are both are both still pretty young, and I just feel like it's going to be the perfect balance. And Ericsson's going to be a big part of, I think, a much better season for Andretti. Yeah, I've gone for for Malikas. Um, this one we're doing more based on opinion rather than highest in the standings. But I think Malikas, as you said, the expectation of him is fairly unknown. But I think there's a lot of factors which play into his advantage. He's got a good team to learn off in their ward and Ross here, real mix of experience and sort of that youthful pace. Um, but I think whilst Malika has got a lot to learn, there are some factors which will really benefit him. The one I particularly highlighted in my article was the fact you got the six ovals in the last eight races, five of them being short ovals. And Malukas is already proved in the, possibly a worst package in the field that he's really strong at these short ovals. And if he's going to a stronger team, if he can keep that ability, and he's also by then got up to speed at these short overs, there's no, there's no doubt that he'll be right at the front. And I think McLaren probably come in with a slightly stronger package than Andretti, and I think Malukas is going to really thrive in that environment. As I said, towards the season's end, I think you can easily claim a couple of podiums in in that run of short overs we've got. So it's a really, really positive scene for Malukas, and um, I think he he will, as we said, maybe surprise more than people thought. I would also like to give an honourable mention, I think, to Felix Rosenqvist as well. In his five years in IndyCar, he's kind of been in the shadows of his teammates somewhat, whereas he really has an opportunity alongside a rookie in Tom Blunkvist to take a leadership role that he hasn't had before to try and guide a team forward. So I think he's really one to watch. I mean, obviously, Stingray Rob as well. He has spoken about not having the sophomore slump and he gets better in his second years. So... We'll see what he can do with with uh, Foyt now. They've got this Penske alliance and obviously there's, there's Grosjean's Huncos as well. And that'll be very interesting knowing how fiery both him and uh, Ricardo Huncos can be. Let's go to the most improved drivers, sort of a similar theme. Um, so I've gone for Colton Herter um, for my pick. I think 2023, in his own words, was underwhelming. There are no race wins. Yes, he got two poles, but... Sort of only one podium, particularly when you compare to Carl Kirkwood, his first season at the team. And whether that was Brian leaving his pit wall, whether that was the four cars, whatever it was, something just didn't really click for her to last year. But I think as we, we sort of have positive vibes for Andretti this year. And I think, you know, we saw Herter's pace didn't just disappear. He had that sort of mid-season run where he was actually genuinely pretty quick. Um, pace doesn't disappear. And I think Herter's going to be back on form this year i really hope he does because he's a great asset to the series and a really encouraging driver for the future and i just can't see the sort of a season like that happening again so i think for me he's, he's definitely going to be the most improved yeah i'll just pick up there because i've also gone for her too i think he admitted that last year was the worst of his career it was the first first year he's been winless and he's now got back-to-back -back seasons of finishing 10th in the championship which is, is a drop off from finishing seventh finishing third finishing fifth and Again, it comes back to the fact that I just feel like Andretti downsizing and really focusing their resources will be really significant. And I think it'll be enough to to kind of just get Herter out of this little slump. And I mean, I think he's also going to be motivated having had Kyle Kirkwood come into the team, sophomore driver, his first year with Andretti, 
take two wins while while Herter is left winless. And Herter is going to be keen, especially given Ericsson's coming in as well as a driver with quite a lot of pedigree, to really show that this is still his team. And I think he's too talented not to not to bounce back and and really start showing the form we know that he is he's capable of again. Uh, I would be shocked if he if he didn't kind of return to that race winning form. Yeah, I think Colton Herter is a good shout. Uh, I probably should have gone with him, but I kind of went with Stingray Rob just for the fact of, um, yeah, I went with him because last year he hit like at the beginning, it wasn't that good, kind of towards the second half. But I'm hoping kind of with his move to AJ Foyt that it will kind of help him out and kind of having like, Ferrucci as a teammate, I think it will help him just kind of improve and I hope that he does. I feel like it's more of I want him to do better because I know that last year it was like a question of if he's going to continue for a second year and then it was like that was going to happen or not and I just think it's more of a personal want for him to do well. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think that's a good shot. I think Rob's as you said, it had a bit of underwhelming year but I think you should have a much more positive year. Let's go to the greatest spectacle in racing. Uh, it's been in the news in the last week. We'll probably get onto that some other week. Um, but read up on it if you haven't, because it's uh, kicking off a bit in Indianapolis. Uh, but the Indy 500, um, it's always fun to predict a winner. Yes, it's probably impossible, but let's have some fun. Uh, I'll kick us off. Alex Pillow is my pick. I think okay, we can't really predict a race in, in three months' time, but I think the general trend has been Pillow has been very strong. Second place in 2021. La not last year, 2022. Obviously, you had that pit lane infraction, which basically took him out of the race when he was leading. And then 2023, obviously, we know what happened with the pit lane incident with VK, but he still recovered to fourth. So, Pelot has been so strong at Indianapolis, obviously, the pole last year as well. I feel like a win is inevitable. And I think I'm going to say this year is the year. He's got the track records to prove he's going to be strong at the speedway. So, he's going to be my guess. Um, I... I went with Power Ward, um, kind of because last year I feel like he could have, or he would have been in the position to at least do really well if an incident didn't happen. And I think if kind of an incident doesn't happen, then he's he does really well because he, let me start that again for a second. He just does really well in the fact of, I feel like he's strong in the Indy 500, at least at the ones that I've seen. And I think... I think just the right circumstances, um, he doesn't kind of get knocked out, and I think it's very possible. So, yeah, I've gone for someone. It's maybe a little bit bolder, just for the fact that he's a slight bit more inexperienced than who you guys have gone for, and has not got as much experience of running up near the front. But I've gone for Kyle Kirkwood. He was running inside the top ten when he was caught up in that pretty horrendous crash when Felix <laughs> Rosenfist hit the wall, and Kirkwood just tagged Rosenfist as he came back down onto the track and obviously ended up upside down. But there is obviously the caveat of Andretti have not been standout on ovals in recent times. They've not won the 500 since 2017, as I mentioned. But I, I got a sense on content day that Kirkwood is really quite ca quietly confident going into what is only his third Indy 500. He spoke quite in depth about it. He said that it wasn't until those latter stages of the race when you know, he'd really cut through the field in, in very impressive fashion. And Andretti had had quite a quite quiet month in, in general, but Kirkwood really grew into into the race before the accident. And, you know, we, we don't know what could have happened. He, he looked like he was one of the maybe five five or so cars that looked a decent bet to actually go on and win the race. Um, but yeah, he, he kind of spoke about the fact that he's been figuring things out on ovals, and that was the case through the month of May. But it got to that late stage of the race and he finally feels like he he cracked you know what feels like a good car and he just feels like his progress reflected that and by the end of the race he described himself as being super super fast which which was true and unfortunately yeah he was caught up in that wreck but i think if he picks up where he left off he, he could be in with a good shout and we all know how good he is obviously one of the best drivers to ever come off the road to indy so I think he will win a win a five hundred. He will win a championship. It's it's just a matter of of when, really. Three good shots. I think we've got three pretty good answers all around. So the next few are sort of a bit more vibes based, but you can put a bit of logic to them. So what we'll kick off. 
overtakes. Who, who wants to go for this one? Most overtakes in the year. Um, I, I've gone for David Malukas for this. It, it's quite a hard one because you kind of have to think of someone who either won't qualify well or, <laughs> you know, could somehow have to keep finding himself coming through the field. And I feel like Malukas, actually, because he's missing the first race, could be someone that, I mean, to be fair, when I predicted this, I forgot he was missing the first race. So <laughs> one one race down, and if thermal counts, then maybe two. <laughs> but I'm still going to stick to my guns and say, I think, you know, it might take him a while to get up to speed. He's obviously missing the, the Sebring test and might miss a few races. So he's going to be playing catch up. He's moving to a new team. He's moving to a Chevrolet team, obviously. So I kind of feel like it could take him a while to get up to speed, but that, that may impact him more over one lap pace. And then there will be times where, you know, he's more comfortable in the race and is making a lot of overtakes. So I'm going for David Malukas. And my my backup option is Roman Grosjean. I'm just going to throw two out there. Just well, because. Um, I didn't have any reasoning behind it at all. I'm not going to lie. Because it was either like predict that someone's going to start bad. And I just, I couldn't kind of think of that. Uh, so I just went with Christian Lundgaard. I feel like he's... I don't really know. I just kind of saw him and I was like, oh, maybe he'll, he won't qualify bad, but maybe he'll be kind of in the middle and then work his way up and then overtake him for podiums and wins. So, yeah. I tried to have a proper think about this. It took me a while, but I'm actually pretty happy with my answer. I've gone for Joseph Newgarden. Now, it might seem a bit crazy, but there's a couple of factors. One, I think his qualifying last year was pretty underwhelming. Um, there wasn't any polls, I don't think, and there wasn't many fast experiences. And, you know, if he continues that, he's obviously going to make up paces in the races because he's a very good driver. So I think he'll get a lot there. But my other thing I took into account was they count the overtakes on lap cars. Now, there's six short over or six ovals in the last eight races, and we know how good New Garden is at ovals. So he's going to absolutely farm overtakes, particularly at Iowa, particularly at Milwaukee. Um, so if he lasts the length of the race, he's obviously going to overtake loads and loads of people, get those numbers up. So that's sort of why I went for Newgarden, just on the basis I hope he's going to overtake a lot of people on ovals to really <laughs> get that number up. I will admit that did cross my mind. I just had a, had a little fear that they could really improve qualifying on road and street courses because they put a lot of effort into that this year. But that is a really good shout. I think that could be the strongest shout, to be fair. Um, so I was going to say, I didn't even think about the lap cars. <laughs> that didn't yeah. cross my mind. Yeah, not an easy decision, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Flip side of the equation, most retirements. Now, this one, you can't really put any basis to, um, unless it's Roman Grosjean. Um, so, I've gone Graham Rahal <laughs> just because he's very unlucky. That's pretty much it. I mean, I've gone for Roman Grosjean because he's retired 12 <laughs> times in 47 <laughs> races, which is over a quarter of his races in IndyCar. And he's just very prone to getting caught up in incidents, unfortunately. So, yeah, maybe he'll fix that this year with, with Huncos. But I've gone for Grosjean just because of the stats. <laughs> I went with the same. I feel like he was more out than he was in at times. Um, just no other reason. He didn't really have a good re a season last year. So Gro Grosjean felt too obvious for me. Like Rahul seemed to always get caught up in other people's massive pileups. So I just had a vibe that he's gonna get loads of them next year. So sorry, and Graham. He, and he had that, that crash under caution at yes, Detroit, Detroit, which I, I was watching the high I'm watching all the highlights of last year's races <laughs> at the moment. And that was that was on today's agenda. I, I so. forgot about that moment. That was a rather bizarre one. But I feel like you know the odd mechanical failure and it's pretty unlucky. So I've gone Rahul. I think maybe at my favourite predictions last year was mid-season where we tried to guess all the winners. I don't know if you guys, but I think that's probably my favourite, if not certainly up there. So let's do it again. Let's do it again, shall we? So someone give us a name. I'm sure the first about five will be all the same. Uh, but someone throw we, a name should we, through, should we go through systematic? Should we go team by team and just go driver <laughs> by driver? Oh, no, that's not as fun, I don't think. <laughs> not as fun. Okay. Oh, so okay. throw a name out there. Alex Pillar. <laughs> yes. I went Scott Dixon. Have you not gone Alex Pillow? Oh, I did as well. I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're all going to agree on Pillow first before we move oh, on. Oh, okay. Next. Yeah, Pillow. <laughs> Sorry. There we are. There's one. I guess you've gone for Dixon then as well. 
Yeah, I, 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 I'm not making the same mistakes I did last year. I'm predicting Dixon. <laughs> yeah, um, I was somehow the only one at mid in the mid-season. Yeah, wasn't it? Embarrassing, <laughs> embarrassing mistake. New Garden. New Garden. Yeah. Good. Someone uh, McLaughlin. Name McLaughlin. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I also put power. Just why not make it the whole team? Yeah, yep. I put power as well. Okay, right. Yeah. Five for five. So if we're agreed on five, <laughs> so I'm sure we're going to fall out soon. Award. Award. I could see that. Mm -hmm. Was that a yes or a no? Is it you can see it or yes. you got it on your list? Yes. Okay, That's right, a, I didn't realise was doing every single race. So I've only got like seven. <laughs> well, no, we're only picking the win. We're not picking the repeat winners. We just. Okay. Um, then, yeah, I can see that anyways. Cool, that's six down. So now I think we're going to start disagreeing. So someone throw a name out there. Uh, Colton Hurset. Yes. I didn't. I don't think that. I no, don't know. Cold. I oh. feel like he could have the opportunity, but I don't know. Throw throw someone else out there then, if you didn't put Herter. <laughs> I went just for the hopes of Marcus Armstrong. I'm still just. I, I feel like he won't, but I just I feel like if I if I say it now, I can maybe manifest it in, which is good enough. <laughs> he was on my he was on my honourable mentions list, but I don't quite. He no, might get he, a podium. He didn't even make my honourable yeah. mentions. I don't think so. You know, <laughs> no, I, I, not not for me. Um, Kirkwood. Kirkwood. Yeah. Cool. So I I think we've all done we've all done eight so far. So we're um, all pretty optimistic. On one, two, yeah, eight, yeah. Put it this way, I think last season had seven winners. Um, <laughs> Ericsson, oh. Newgarden, Kirkwood, McLaughlin, Pelo, Lungard, Dixon. So we're already saying we're going to have oh. more winners than we did last year, yeah. and I've still got more. I've still got three more. <laughs> Throw one out there, Archie. You've got three more. Uh, well, let's. I, I'm going to go with my really bold one last. I'm going to go for Marcus Ericsson. For no, I didn't, the I didn't, I didn't mm. go Ericsson. It seems like an obvious choice, but I don't mind him now. I yeah, kind of said everyone that I've written down. Oh, you've already done everyone. All right, you're yeah, going because I safe. didn't know how many people was put in. So I was like, oh, is this... I was like, oh, is this your too choice? Many? How, how many people are going to win a race? That's the whole point. <laughs> just to work it out. No, I just don't get the vibe Ericsson's going to win. Um, I don't know. I just... I think in his first year, you know, he wasn't exactly a serial winner at Ganassi. And Jetty probably aren't quite the same level. You know, I could see it happening, but I'm just not going to predict it. So... Yeah. I'm going to go for my, my tenth separate winner of the season will be Christian Lungard. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I went for Lungard. Your bold, your mid-season prediction last year worked out so well. I think I had to had to agree again this year. Uh, has anyone else got any more? Because I've got I've, one more in me. I've got one more. I've got a bold one. I also have a bold one. Who's you your bold go? one? My bold one is Graham Rahal. Okay, yeah, that's not my bold one. Um, I've gone for Lungfist. I can see a rookie winner happening. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just get good vibes from him, Chris. I think he can, he can snatch a winner in a chaotic race. Yeah, he was on my honourable mentions list. And also on my honourable mentions list was Alexander Rossi, who we've all snubbed, and also Malukas as well. But I kind of feel like Malukas will have a decent season without actually winning a race. Um, it's a big year for Rossi as well. So I feel like he's kind of got to win a race, but I'm just not sure in this field there's there's too many drivers it's just again it kind of just speaks to how competitive uh the series is really that that was that was exactly the point i was going to make you know i've, I've gone picked for 10, 11 winners i've gone for 10 drivers and i haven't picked the likes of marcus erickson malukas rossi the indy 500 randomer you can always get you know ray exactly. hall etc like there's so exactly. many possibilities that you just can't <laughs> yeah exactly so who knows who knows? Um, but this is always the most fun prediction. So I'll look back at this at the end of year with yeah. some success, I hope. So yeah, hello forward. to our September, October selves. <laughs> right. The most fun one. Your bold prediction of the year. Uh, I am going to go on a limb and say that a one-off entry will take Indy 500 poll. And I've, I've got quite a lot of rationale for this. Uh, I mean, it's quite hard, actually thinking of something that's bold and i was initially thinking something along the lines of kiffin simpson maybe going out and surprising a few people notching a few top tens but yeah I, i've kind of settled on this that 
yeah, there's going to be a one-off entry taking pole for the 500. It's a very strong field of one-off drivers. Obviously, you've got Dreyer and Reinbold racing with their double American duo, and it's a strong lineup. IMS specialist, Indiana Native, obviously, daily. He's led laps in 21 and 22, and they also obviously have the 2014 winner at their disposal in Ryan hunter Ray. I mean, there's Kyle Larson as well. I mean, it would be a major surprise if he was to take pole, but it's such a big story that you, you never quite know what could happen there. Um, and he's a very adaptable driver, so you never know what could happen when he steps into a, a typically strong McLaren team. Um, otherwise, you've got, you've got Takuma Sato, obviously, is, is kind of an unknown RLL. They had to face, face bump day with three of their drivers last year, so kind of don't know whether they're going to turn it around or not. The drivers were relatively confident in on content day after a lot of kind of off-season work. Sartre obviously won with the team in, in 2020, so we'll see what happens there. And speaking of 2020, maybe one of the, the best bets for a possible one-off poll could be Marco Andretti, who took the poll for that August race, his final full-time season. Uh, now he's obviously a, a one-off. Um, yeah, if Andretti can kind of fire in all cylinders with that one less car, which is, is four compared to five at the 500, then you never know. And and maybe again, one of the other good bets is it's Helio Castro Neves, won the race as recently as, as 2021. And the drive for five continues as he's a, now a one-off entry, having moved away from full-time racing with MSR into that, that leadership role now. Um, I mean, it would be the biggest shock of all then if, if R.C. Innocent took it for Abel. Uh, that's not actually a confirmed entry yet, but obviously he turned up at content day, so we all expect that to happen. But maybe don't expect him to take Paul, but you never know. That's why it's the greatest spectacle in racing. Anything can happen. Yeah, um, I don't... Hearing yours, I don't think mine's not bored. Mine's just kind of like mid-ish, I guess. I went... It's kind of ties in with the race winners, but I was like, either Maluka or Armstrong will win a race. I feel like the bolder predict prediction is Armstrong. I feel like he could necessarily get a podium, a win. I don't know, just because there's so many... Not like against his kind of talent, there's just so many great drivers that it's just like it's so hard to tell. Um, but if you want a bolder one, just maybe one of the rookies will win it, win it. I think maybe like one of the first races, one of them will just win it. But my one on the website is slightly different because I went for 10 different drives to win a race before I found that Archie put 11 different drivers to win a race. <laughs> so I, I was running around and I had absolutely no idea. So I'm just going to go on a limb and say Scott Dixon will retire at the end of the year. Oh so, my word! That, you know, it's God. Something. <laughs> it is bold, but you know, he's 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 not exactly yeah. in his youth and Scott his Dixon will power. His contract's up at the end of the year, so I thought let's just go for it. You know, I might be completely yeah. wrong. I, I wow. don't want I don't want to be right, but <laughs> I thought let's go. Fair for enough. Go yeah. yeah wow. Know. Yeah. I mean, that would be something. Wins the championship, bows out. None of us picked him for the championship, but no. it could happen. <laughs> now, for this year, I thought I'd spice it up a little bit by giving us all 10 completely random questions related to this season, which we're just going to have a little fun at. End of the season, have a little tally up of who gets the most of these random ones right. You can probably use some logic. Most of it is probably just pure guesswork. So it's a bit of fun. We'll see we'll see what happens. Put your predictions in for this one as well, because I think this will be quite fun. So I'm so excited for this. <laughs> this is this is gonna be great. This this is incredible. I think this will be the best of twenty twenty four next year. This these predictions are gonna be so fun. So who will come twenty first in Iowa race two? Stingray Rob. I've gone um... for Santino Ferrucci. AJ forty fives. Going with Graham Rahal. Please say he's racing. Yeah. Just so you know, he finished twenty first twenty first, sorry, at Iowa race two last year. It was Devin De Francesco. Oh, that's gonna go well this year. Race Unless one he surprises us. Race one though. Connor Daly. That's also gonna go so, really well. <laughs> yeah, so twenty twenty two. Iowa race two, 21st place was Helio Castroneves. It's not going very well, is it? And Takuma Sato for the race one. So we haven't had much luck here. So oh, put it this way this year, we're going to have a new person coming 21st <laughs> Iowa. So yeah. 
Maybe, maybe one maybe, of us. Hopefully. Maybe the drivers will listen to the podcast and exclusively battle for twenty first place. Twenty <laughs> <laughs> first is the new win. Now, this is a bit of a different prediction. Again, just as equally as important. What is Ryan Hunter Ray's lap two speed at the Indy 500 going to be? So we're going to do his fastest run to clarify here. His fastest run. Oh, oh lap two of his fastest yeah, run. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, okay. his fastest four lap average. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm mm. going to go for 233.331 miles per hour. I think it's going to be quite a bit slower. I've gone for 232.435. Okay. Um, I'll go. Maybe just a bit low and just go like 231.68 like, or something. Hunter Ray's lap two last year, 232.338. I think they're gonna they're gonna find that extra mile per hour with the uh, <laughs> with the lighter uh, the lighter bodywork in anticipation for the hybrid. But I reckon he's gonna go late in the day oh temperatures have increased it's bad draw. all about the draw he could get a bad draw, bad draw. yeah this is the thing he's got to bear in mind stingray rob's best finish of the year i've gone for 14th i went with 10th i've Just... gone for ninth at road america oh you're going that specific yeah all oh, right oh. oh i didn't ask for that i mean if if i throw a race out there milwaukee race one I don't know. I thought no, no. Actually, no. I retract that. I'm going to go Detroit. Okay. God. I don't know if I want to throw out a race just in case, like the ten's right, but the race is wrong. <laughs> um, I still get the point. <laughs> um, we'll do it in. Where should we do it? Maybe like Road America. Is that on this year? I think it is. <laughs> yeah, that that was my call. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm, um, I'm a lot less behind right. Stingray than both of you are. We both think um, he's going to be great at Road America. It's going to be a chaotic race and he's going to finish ninth. Road America last year, he finished 22nd. His best finish of the year was 12th in Laguna. I thought it was 12th, so I just was like, maybe <laughs> up it a little bit, second year, you know. Total red flags across the entirety of the season. Now, there's so three this... in the 500 alone, so okay. skewed it. So is this in races? Because race I've, race, I've got a race total and I've got a, a total race, across the season. Race only. Race only. Please do a total across the season. We'll do both. <laughs> we'll do both, uh, yeah. So I've gone for six in races and I've gone for 76 across the season. I don't actually know how many there were last six. season. But like you see, it, there's some, some weekends it. you get about five in every practice session. So, uh, yeah, I just think there's going to be some like just horrendously chaotic, like eight eight red flag practice sessions. I've gone for four in races. It, the Indy 500 really skewed me because there was three in them alone, but I, I don't think we're going to get that many. And I'm just going to throw a limb and say 42. For I think I've gone really high here. That I think, seems quite high. Yeah, you never know. There might just be like some just horrendously chaotic. There's a there's some repaves. St. Pete's got a bit of repave. I think Mid Ohio's been repaved. So Detroit has been a bit. Oh, mm. Detroit! That was that was one of the really bad ones last year, where it was like just constant yeah. red flags. They got like yep. barely any practice time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've gone with seven, and then I'll predict like maybe fifty across the season with ranges. Okay, interesting. I really want to find out how many there were last season. Yeah, we'll find I, out. I tried to Google it everywhere. It was just, I couldn't see it. Who will cause the first caution at the race in Alabama? I've gone bold for Felix Rosenquist. It's bold of you to assume there will be a caution, but if there is a caution, <laughs> uh, Santino Ferrucci will, will outbreak himself at the first corner. Mm. And he'll, really he'll, 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 run into it. he'll run into it. He'll run into the back of. This is this is what I've not decided. Uh, he'll run into the back of Marcus Ericsson who had a poor qualifying. Um, I was like in my mom, maybe Kirkwood. Well, I'm gonna go. For, I'm gonna say Rosen Christ has gone into turn four too optimistically whilst making an overtake on Pietro Fittipaldi. We're going specific, right? This one I need clarification on. So we, it's the biggest variation in Milwaukee laps. Are we going to do it in position or in time? I was oh. go I was thinking time. Oh, no, I was, was I thinking time. position? 
I was going I'm thinking thinking. position, but I yeah, no, actually, yeah, I think I was thinking position. I'm trying, I was trying to wrap my brain because I did, I did this a few days ago now. I, my, my plan. Let's so yeah, go, I think let's, let's finalize position. Someone else go first. I'm going to look first for browsing first. At least you want to take it away. Yeah, um, I just put long guard. Once again, no reasoning behind it. Um, maybe. <laughs> I, I've gone for Ed Carpenter because I feel like he could just have unbelievable laps. So last year he was a tiny bit dodgy on some ovals. So I think there could be a variation in his two laps as well. I went for Carpenter as well. So there we are. But he's, he's been in Milwaukee before. So he might just have a stonking first lap and a not very good second lap. So forget the championship standings. The 13th in the oval only standings. It's going to be Marcus Armstrong because he always finishes 13th in everything. <laughs> um, I've gone I, for Renus VK. I kind of just took inspiration from the championship and went with Grosjean because didn't he like get 13th like this year and last year or something? So I was like, maybe he'll continue the theme just overall, maybe. In overalls last year, 13th in the standings for Santino Ferrucci. It's obviously skewed a bit by the 500. Uh, anyone, anyone else got any, want to know where a particular driver came in the overall standings? Uh, Grosjean, well, came, Go on. <laughs> Grosjean came 14th. VK came 12th. It's close enough. Yeah, um, I can't really ask you about Armstrong because I, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to take it by storm. His uh, video he had with Marshall Pruitt standing next to, right next to the track at IMS, I think it was during the open test, is going to give him cracking inspiration. And so, to be fair, all of his overall experience that he's, he's gaining through tests and what have you. But... The most different liveries throughout the course of the season. Now, we did, the, we did this in our trivia challenge last year, and I think Rahul had the most with nine, if that helps. Yeah, I've gone for Rahul. Oh, you've gone for Rahul. I have, yeah. Um, yeah, I went with him. Maybe he'll like continue the theme. I, think. I know Ray Hall's doing he's doing four races, I think, with Hendrickson. So I think that's gonna well, significantly downplay his chances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've gone for Scott McLaughlin. Because he's already had about three announced. I think he had eight last year. He sort of gets dumped all the sponsors that Penske don't want to put on his car. So Yeah. I think if uh if it's not Graham, I think uh Pietro Fittifoldi could be a, a oh, very good, good outside shout. shout. Actually, that is a good shout. That is a good shout. Um most 18th place finishes across is, the this year. This is one of my favourite. This is one of my favourites. This I'm one I like to... proper analysed. <laughs> it took me so long. Okay, well, I didn't analyse it because I've gone for Tom Longfist and there's nothing to analyse. So he was one of my contenders, but I decided to opt against him. So don't know if that's a good place or a bad thing. Ellie, you go for yours. I was going to analyse it. Was like, no, that seems like a bit too much effort. Um, so who just Got 18th a couple of times. I went with Vika. So, so yeah. statistically, last year, Harvey finished the most 18th. We had four 18th place finishes. There were three for VK last year. There were three for Ilot, and there were two for Grosjean. I have gone for Kiffin Simpson. That's my guess. I thought I really thought Rasmussen, but then I was like, you're eliminating seven chances if you go for Rasmussen. So it's not a wise guess. So I've gone for Simpson. Good shout. Good shout. And then this is the one which is, I think, all, oh, no, apart from the Alabama one, maybe um, the rest, the list is just pure, pure guesswork. The first pit stop at Toronto. Uh, Colton Hurt is going to get damaged and he'll have to come into the pits at the end of lap one. <laughs> okay. I've just thrown one out there, Tom Blomqvist. I just put Rossi. I don't know. He seemed like he'd pit first. Very run. Maybe. Like they start listening to this, and some team will tactically pull in their driver that one to <laughs> tick off their points for us. So I, I can't see Andressi and McLaren doing it. So Maya Shank, if you're listening, <laughs> pull Tom in lap one, and we'll see what happens. But write your predictions for the random ones below because we're going to be super intrigued to see these, and these are going to be worth some good points, I think, in the end of season calculations. We have done two rounds. The first of all, be very serious, sort of looking at more analytically. The second, completely just vibes. And the third, a mixture of both. So we'll equate points accordingly at the end of the year. We'll work out the point system at the end of the year because it'll probably be easier than working it out now. Um, but what we're going to do 
is we're going to predict the championship first to 26. Now, obviously, Dale Coin Racing haven't announced, but the rumor is anyway they're going to be doing loads of split programs. So realistically, they'll be at the bottom anyway. Um, so we're going to attempt to, to do the championship standings in order, see how close we get. It's a bit of fun, see how similar it is. So, yes. So in 26th, I hope we've all got Ed Carpenter. Yes. Yes. Uh, presume in 25th, we all have Christian Rasmussen. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So those obviously are sharing a car, so they won't really have the representative running. Now we get into the people who are doing all 17 races, apart from David Malukas, um, for the season, or have the intention to do all 17 races, I should say, because you never quite know what's going to happen. 24th, I've gone for Stingray Rob. I've also gone for Stingray Rob. I went with Ray Hall. Oh, Ray's going to have a really bad year, according to you. Sorry. 23rd, I've gone with Kiffin Simpson. I've gone for Augustine Canapino. Oh, wow. Okay. I went with Stingray. 22nd, I've gone for Santino Ferrucci. I've gone for Tom Blankvist. I went with uh, Itapalde. You're harsh to the RL elves. I'm sorry, it was more of just, I was going through, I was like, do I think you're going to do better than them? Mm. So. 21st, I've gone for Blunkvist. I've gone for, I've gone for Simpson. I went with Grosjean. 20th, I've gone Canapino. I've gone for Ferrucci. I went with um, Simpson. I think me and Archie are now have all selected the same drivers in a slightly different order. Um, <laughs> 19th, I've gone for Grosjean. I've gone for Fittipaldi. Uh, I went with Ferrucci. 18th, I've gone for Rahul. I've gone for Grosjean. Uh, VK. Now, this bit, I think 18th to or 19th to 11th, I found really difficult to order them. It's really difficult to separate them. So, this is, could be literally in any order. 17th, I've gone for, I feel this is harsh, but I've gone for Rosenquist. I've gone for VK. I went with Blomquist. That's a mistake. I've gone for VK 16th, so pretty similar. Sort of I've range. gone for Rosenquist 16th. <laughs> <laughs> I went for Lundquist. I, I feel like I say his name wrong, but yeah. I feel I've gone optimistic for this one, but because he was my surprise of the season, I can't put him in 20th, so I've gone for Fittipaldi. <laughs> I've gone for his teammate, Ray Hall. I went with Canapino. Another optimistic choice. Be out from now, yeah, the, these three I found really hard to order. I've gone Armstrong in 14th. I've gone for Malukas. I, I still expect him to like surprise a few people, but I just think it's going to be so tight in that area that he might just lose out from missing that one race. I went with Rosenquist. And I've <laughs> then gone Malukas in 13th. I think maybe he would maybe be one spot higher if he did that race, but I've put him in 13th. I mean, it's so hard because it feels like Malukas isn't is better than 13th, but everyone else in front of him, like, they're not going to finish any worse, so... Exactly. It's so hard, and I've gone for the reverse view again. I've gone for Armstrong. <laughs> I went with Kirkwood, but I feel like I put him way too low. Oops. I've gone for Lundqvist in 12th. I've also gone for Lundqvist in 12th. I went with one guard. I'm and completely off you guys. Seventh last year. <laughs> you might be completely right. Who knows? Could be the way to go. I've gone Rossi for 11th. I've gone Rossi for 11th oh, as well. This is scarcely similar. I went with Armstrong. Um, right, into the top 10, I've gone Marcus Ericsson. I went for Christian Lungard. Ooh, you guys are I... being harsh to Lungard. I went with her. Well, being and, and harsh and hurt her. Ninth, Three, I've gone... Tenth. Sorry. I've... <laughs> yeah, I've gone for Kirkwood in ninth. I've gone for power. I went with Rossi. It's just so tight. Like I feel this like Howard could finish so ninth. Tight. He could finish fourth. Like yeah. Eighth, I've gone for Lungard. I've gone for Ericsson. I went with High with Malukas. I don't know. He could do it. I'll have oh, I, I I don't see it being impossible. To be fair. Seventh, I've gone for power. I've gone for Herter. I went with New Garden. I didn't. Oh, it was all the I'm sorry. <laughs> Sick five gone for Herter. I've gone for O Ward. I went with power. Not I'm impressed. So uh, not impressed with that from you, Archie. That's how gonna be a biggest difference here. Um fifth place on this well, two fair, this is probably my really harsh one, Scott Dixon. 
Uh, I've gone for Cal Kirkwood. Wow. That is <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> That's optimistic. Yeah, um, McLaughlin up at fourth. I've put mm. Dixon fourth. Oh, the same as Dan McLaughlin. And then New Garden third. New Garden is also third for me. I put Dixon. Maybe he'll repeat it. Second, I've gone for Pelé. I've also gone for Pelé second. I went with Paddle. And then obviously a war champion for me. Yeah, McLaughlin. I went with Pelé. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, me and Arch is pretty similar all the way through. That's yeah, just, uh, just a couple of couple of big ones. Like, I, I feel like I feel like Kirk was just going to have a really good season. Uh, yes. That's probably my standout one, putting him fifth. Yeah, I don't think I've gone really over the top for anyone. I don't think. I think I've gone fairly conservative in mine. But, you know, it's just so hard to say, really. Um, but so like, you know, Looking at my list again, like Rossi in 11th feels extremely it was, harsh. It was harsh, but then I look at who's above him and exactly. we're like... And that was exactly the same with Lungard in 10th, because it, Lungard could finish 5th if they crack the ovals, but who knows what's going to happen. Any of these drivers, I could feasibly be seeing... Plus my plus minus five, what I actually put them. So it's it's really not easy, but I'm happy-ish with mine. So season's end, we'll see. I think even I think I feel like even mid-season we've got that massive break at the Olympics. So we'll probably have a look, sort of then see how we're getting on. Um, but it's going to be intriguing. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I can't wait till we get to state. Well, I can wait because I'm yeah, much I much season away. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait in some ways. I can wait because I want to see how good the predictions are, but then we've got to endure the whole off-season thing again. So do I want to wait? I don't know. Um, but I think that is our 2024 predictions locked in. Um, so please comment all your predictions below. Please share us your predictions. Play along at the end of the year. See how many you get right. Because it because it will be quite interesting. Um so yeah that is that is pretty much it um so thanks very much for watching thanks very much for listening next week is going to be the big one i mean our last episode before indycar returns so we will have our 2024 season preview looking at all the teams looking at um, some things to look out for in the season so that is going to be next week can you believe it we have made it through six months of turmoil and we've got one episode to go um dale coin we, I surely, sure. I know we say this every week, but surely we'll have news next week. Maybe by the time the episode's released, you never know. Yeah. They'll, the they'll, be, they'll still be in the thick of the test. Yeah, they'll yeah. still be in the thick of the test. So, hopefully by next week, we, well, I'd be a bit concerned by next week if we didn't have news and coin. Um, but we will hopefully by then, and as part of that, we will delve into it. Say so, yeah, our opinions, etc., etc. Et um, but predictions locked in. Um, we'll make a note of them, and we'll turn back to them in. How much time? Seven months time? That's about right. Yeah, seven months time. Um, so, as I said, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for listening. And we'll see you next time for our 2024 season preview.